Also, Cristina, I know that you have a very interesting project. It's called Conectando o Mundo. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me more about it? What's the project about? So in short words, uh, first, Conectando Mundo means um, connecting the world. So it's Portuguese for connecting the world. And it's all about languages. Um, so I try to help people to uh, be more fluent in the language in a more natural way. So I work mainly with adults. And another thing is, of course, translations and intercultural courses as well. Intercultural preparation for Brazilians who move abroad, mostly people who go to China. But also, I do help uh, foreigners coming to Brazil. So it's not only language thing; it's it's the whole pack, you know. And sometimes it's just the intercultural part. It depends on what the person needs, uh, how much time the person has actually to prepare. Uh, it's very interesting. And uh, about your students uh, who come to Brazil for a short, lo long term, what's mm -hmm. uh, what were. Uh, the farthest students, I mean, uh, are they only from Euro European Union or United States or Canada, or are they from other more specific, interesting countries? So, uh, well, uh, I had um, mainly people from Europe. There was once uh, a young man from Indonesia, but that did not continue very much. But uh, in days of Internet, actually, actually, everything is possible. So you can be from any part in the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, About Indonesian, like a year ago when I came here for the first time, I met here in Sao Paulo people from Indonesia, and uh, I, I can speak Indonesian as, as I mentioned before, and uh, I sc literally I scared, I scared them, and uh, that they, they were working in the embassy as far as I know. So that that was it. I mean, that was the only chance here I used Indonesian, but that that's interesting how people from that far come to Brazil. It's unbelievable. Right, right. Um, so, but mo mostly it's um, Europeans. So I would say uh, Europeans they they often have this cliche idea of Brazil, right? So it's important to work on that to prepare them for them not to be frustrated when they live in São Paulo in a metropolis like São Paulo, where everything is complicated in the beginning, like like transport, public transport is um, you just don't have timetables. You just stand at the street and and you you stand on the street and wait until a bus comes and you need to. To yeah, okay. Nowadays in the world of apps, everything got easier too. But yeah, it's could be could be a problem if you don't if you don't prepare. Yeah, I agree with you. Like if to compare Zagreb and uh, São Paulo or just <laughs> uh, my, my my city Kiev, I mean it it would be the same. Like four million of people in Kiev, and that, that's that's it. I mean very calm, very everything is uh, really. Uh, how can I say, like tranquility, it's called like <laughs> tranquility, yes. to total tranquility. <laughs> Compared to here, yes, for sure, for sure. Like like, like uh, Brazil, uh, Brazilian cities, they, they have the reputation for being violent and um, you also have neighborhoods that you have to be careful uh, at, but but it's not like super extreme. So very often foreigners, when they when they come to Sao Paulo, they, they're scared of leaving the door. So, so it's important, right, to let them know... Uh, There are good neighborhoods. Um, there are some rules that you have to follow, and then everything is fine. You can have a normal life here. So, yeah, uh, I agree with you. But still, by still by far by me, I I discover lo lots of rules just randomly. And they they came out. And uh, if to talk about other side of your activity of your company, mm -hmm. uh, why Brazilian people go to China? Is it just on business purpose or just touristic purpose? What's the main purpose, or both? It is. It is mainly business, really. Um, uh, I I usually don't don't meet people who only have a cultural interest. Um, it happens. So sometimes you have mixed marriages, for example. So of course the the Brazilian partner wants to understand a little bit better. The, the Chinese family, right? But usually it's business, really. Um, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, right, opening their their import-export businesses, and they, they need to go to China. They need to be understood. You also have a lot of people, like, um, uh, in the in the hier hierarchy, right, uh, needing to do just stuff. It's not like they want to learn to negotiate, they, but they want to have... Um, maybe a cultural knowledge, you know, to make a better impression, to to be um, to be not misunderstood, right? To also get advantages for their companies. Yeah, I agree totally with this because to do a business with Chinese companies is hard, and uh, I already had this experience. Uh, thanks God, it was successful, and uh, my 
at that time, the bank I worked worked in, uh, we acquired uh, companies to, to total servicing. But it was unbelievable experience. It was really tiring experience. So uh, the customer was very demanding. And uh, like I after after the first project. Uh, implemented i felt i felt like a squeeze squeezed out lemon but <laughs> from the other side i, I learned i learned some interesting stuff from it sure. from, so i think that's that's a very tough tough work i mean to uh because as far as i know brazilian has has a total different totally different met- mentality than a chinese person am i right yes you're totally right um the first time i visited brazil was actually after having lived for six months in China and uh, it was even a cultural shock for me. So, so I'm European, I've been to China where where things are just stricter, you know, compared to Brazil. And then I came to Brazil and I saw all those young folks, you know, with almost no clothes uh, for my <laughs> standards, you know, after coming from China and it was a cultural shock. So I thought, wow, what do Chinese families who emigrate uh, think about that, right? In the beginning, it's just like super open. It's it's just like the other extreme of what they lived. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, like people are more closed and to uh, give them trust to let them feel trust uh, you should really uh, make an effort am i right yes i think so so if a brazilian really wants to to have a friendship with chinese so let's say you're the same age let's say some folks of our age right around the 30s um and uh yeah, it's just like sh- you have to to share details about your own culture, but also show curiosity for the other's culture. So it's not like, oh wow, that is strange, that is strange. No, but just go there, try to find out why things are the way they are, right? And try to make the best out of it. And and the more you understand from a culture, the happier you are when you live there. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe I I'm gonna ask you now. So. <laughs> Mikrofon. Also, <lacht> also ich habe gehört, du sprichst ja auch Deutsch, richtig? Ja, ja, ich, spr- ich kann Deutsch. Aber, aber jetzt äh, habe ich äh, sehr, sehr, äh, nicht so viele Möglichkeiten, um es zu benutzen. Aber du sprichst gut, das finde ich ja toll. Aha. Nein, nein, nein. Äh, vorher äh, habe ich äh, Deutsch bei der Uni gelernt, aber, aber nach der Uni äh, habe ich bei der Haifeisenbank gearbeitet. Ach. Die Raiffeisenbank, die Bank, wo du auch erzählt hast, wo du dann am Ende äh, chinesische Kunden hattest. Ja, ja, wirklich, ah. genau. Und äh, dorthin habe ich äh, Chef, die Öster- die, der Österreicher war, ja. und ha- hat er mit äh, und er hat mit mir äh, sehr, sehr äh, täglich, täglich, täglich Deutsch gesprochen. Sehr schön, das ist super, das freut mich. Dann sag doch mal einfach so, was gefällt dir am besten hier in Brasilien? Mädchen. <lacht> ich glaube schon, ja. Unsere Kamerafrau, nicht wahr? <lacht> ja, 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 ja. Äh, und, 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 und auch Essen. Äh, ich glaube, das Acai ist ausgezeichnet und ist sehr toll. Und ja, sehr gesund, nicht wahr? Acai, das wird ja gelobt jetzt auch in den USA. Ne? Das ist so das Gesundheitsding. Ja, ich, ich auch glaube so. Äh, und was, 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 du, was du machst in Brasilien? In Brasilien. Ah, was ich mag. Also ich mag hier, ich glaube, am meisten die Leute. Auch wenn sie mich manchmal ärgern, sind es doch sehr freundliche und positive Leute. Ja, ja. <lacht> ich, ich, bin, ich bin einverstanden. Mhm, okay. Sehr schön. Das war aber toll. Danke, Roman. <lacht> Nichts zu danken. <lacht> gut, gut. Okay, gut. Uh. Christina, thank you very much for such an interesting conversation. Uh, both for your language experiences, uh, for sharing your experience about Croatian language and Ukrainian language, their similarities and differences, and also sharing information about your project, which helps people from around the world. Mm -hmm. Also, guys, my subscribers uh, who want to visit Brazil uh, sooner or later, uh, if you want to visit for a long term or even a short term, feel free to contact Christina. I will I'll leave the contact data below the video and try to put uh, in the video itself. Also for my Brazilian subscribers who think about going to China and uh, need a mentor uh, on how to do 
step by step and to learn Mandarin fluently. Uh, also, feel free to check out the link below. And now uh, we will say goodbye. And uh, in Ukrainian, it's do pobachenia. And how can I say this in Croatian? Well, one version would be dovidzenia. 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 And how another version? This is Bogum, but that's very Catholic. Uh, yeah, I mean, we also we also we also say this in our languages, also in Russian, Ukrainian, as uh, Bohom, also. Okay, see you around, guys. Bye. careca, eu acho. Não. Não, não. mas com careca, mas não, não in Germany and by then he was just my boyfriend no stop stop that's not the story that's not the right <laughs> version of the story <laughs> but you're afraid of dogs <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's usually China so I usually prepare people to to go to China that's m the most wanted part Oh, really? So <laughs> there are a lot of Chinese people here who want to learn Mandarin. It's interesting to me. There are a lot of Brazilians who want to learn Mandarin. You said there are a lot of Chinese wanting to learn Mandarin. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Think. Mm -hmm. So uh, my subscribers who want to go to China from my Brazilian subscribers, feel free to check up the link above and below <laughs> and everywhere. <laughs> oh. Okay, just freeze. I'm not gonna interrupt you this time. No, no, you feel free to interrupt me. <laughs> yeah. I will help you. Okay. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. How much do you charge per hour? <laughs> I think I need one too. <laughs> uh, I will reimburse you with some other services, okay? <laughs> Ooh, my that's hands nice. Are very cold. Oh, uh, no. yeah, I can imagine, I can imagine. We're going to have a hot cup of tea or coffee soon. Oh, nice, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will also include this in. <laughs> 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 <laughs>